Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is the spirit of fear. Beloved family, our text says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. There are four basic responses to fear. They are freeze, fight, flight, or fright. Understand that these can be natural responses to becoming afraid, as fear is a natural response that we all have. Remember, when the angel of the Lord appears, or when the Most High God or King Jesus Christ appears to humans, what is the first thing that they say? Yes, do not fear, or be not afraid. Why? Because fear is a natural response. Many animals have natural built-in responses to fear. The opossum has a unique natural ability. We typically refer to this animal's defense mechanism as playing dead, but there's actually nothing playful about it. The act is completely involuntary. Under intense fear, opossums fall into a comatose-like state that can last for hours, long enough to convince any predator that the opossum is already dead, and it gives off a repulsive corpse-like odor that makes it less appetizing. But fear can also be taught and learned. If we have a near-drowning experience, we develop a fear of being in a large body of water. Or we may be taught to fear certain areas, animals, even people. So for us to try to ignore or get rid of our ability to be afraid or fearful would be unnatural. The problem comes when the emotion of fear interferes with our daily lives, even something as routine as going outside. This is the spirit of fear that God warns us about that didn't come from our loving Father. For the Holy Spirit is from Him, which gives us the fruits of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The spirit of fear is a demonic spirit that torments. Make no mistake, its intention is to keep you from fulfilling the destiny that God has on your life. The spirit of fear will keep us awake at night, hijacking our dreams to nightmares. It will keep us from forgiving others, holding on to emotional, physical, and mental wounds of the past. It will keep us locked up in our homes as prisoners for fear of going outside, and it will paralyze and destroy us in the midst of our fearful condition. It even heightens fear while fearful. Have you ever watched or witnessed something frightful and then the slightest touch, even a thread from your sweater will make you jump? Imagine living in that state of mind continually. That's torment. I confess, family, I've watched the show Hoarders with emotions of disbelief about the fear of something as simple as throwing something away. I've watched in horror how infestation and rats live in the home of the hoarders. And then the spirit of shame comes in of having others visit or leaving their house. Listen, family, the spirit of fear opens the demonic realm to other spirits like shame, guilt, condemnation, and lack of self-worth. It even causes physical harm to our bodies. Studies show that fear can cause headaches to become migraines, an upset stomach to become gastroesophageal reflux disease, muscle aches to become fibromyalgia, body aches to become chronic pain, general nervousness to become panic attacks, and the list goes on. King Jesus tells a story about an unclean spirit that recruits others. He says in Matthew 12, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through dry places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. 
Then it goes and takes with it seven, that number meaning perfection, seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. Now, our king doesn't specify which unclean spirit, but we can see how the spirit of fear that causes mental and emotional torment, stress, and physical sickness could be the unclean spirit that Christ was referring to. So how do we deal with this spirit of fear? In 1 John 4, 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives or casts out fear, because fear has to do with torment or punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Now, to clarify, the one who fears means the one who has the spirit of fear, not the one who may become afraid. The Most High God, our Father, loved us perfectly, and His Son, King Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God, demonstrated it by giving His life. For there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And as we mentioned, fear can be taught. We just have to learn to fear the right person or spirit. King David said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And King Jesus declares, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Finally, when the spirit of fear comes, speak to it. Declare, I am loved perfectly. And that perfect love cast out fear. I will not be tormented or punishment. The Holy Spirit lives in me, and there is no double occupancy for fear. For as the Passion Translation says of our text today, For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. Much love.